In this lesson, we're going to talk about the QCAD window and all the various components that comprise the QCAD window. For example, up here across the top, we have drop-down menus, a help menu, miscellaneous window, and on across here, layers. And we got view menus and edit menus and file menus, like most Windows programs have. Next item we have here is the toolbars. And you can open a file, you can save a file, you can save as, you can redo, undo, and you can cut things and clipboards, paste and copy from to and from the clipboard. And over here we control the very screen viewing concepts. And down here on the left hand side we have what's called the CAD toolbars. These tools, this is the main CAD toolbar. This is called the idle state. If you notice, you put your mouse up here, it says reset or idle. It says it right underneath it right there. It says reset idle. So this is considered the idle state when no tools are selected. So to select a tool, you simply select a line, a circle, whatever you want to draw. We'll pick a line. Let's do a rectangle from two points. So we're going to now, once we choose our tool, I notice up here it shows the tool as a rectangle using two points. Now we have this thing called the snap grid, the snap choices, I should say. And we're going to snap the two points to the grid. So the mouse can only go to different points on the grid. So there's the first part point of the rectangle. And another point on the grid, the dots, is the second point of the rectangle. So now we've drawn a rectangle, but it was forced to follow these grid marks, these grid points. So that's what the snap tools do. The snap tools control where you can place entities on the drawing area. So that brings us to the drawing area is the next topic. This is the drawing area here, the black area. We have rulers across the top for the X dimension, rulers on the left side for the Y dimension. Down here at the bottom we have some status lines. You'll learn more about these later. We'll just say that they're there right now. Over on the right you've already seen how we can dock different different views in here this property editor because I have such a small screen I'm 800 by 600 resolution I'm going to disable the property editor and disable the command line uh, view when I'm not using them it gives me more drawing space due to my limited screen size so this gives you a, an overview of the various components of the QCAD window so let's open up a new file. We'll click up here, File, New. And now we have a new file. And it's a blank drawing area. And if you want to, what you should do is actually pick a name for what you're going to draw. In other words, let's say I'm going to Save As. And I'm going to call this um, Test Test 1. I'm going to save it as Test 1. Click Save. It already exists. I did it earlier. So yes, I want to write over it. So now what I've done, I've established a name, test1dxf, for this file. Now as I draw lines and do things like this, when I go to save it, it's got to click up here. I can click up here and say save. Or I can click up here and say save. The point is, I've already named it, so I won't forget what I called it. It's already named right there. It tells you test one DXF is the name of it. And you won't end up saving it by writing on top of some pre existing file like maybe this file over here. Because you've already changed the name to the new destination file when you start the drawing. So always do at the beginning of a drawing. Don't wait till you got the drawing almost finished and then pick a name. Because you might forget and it might revert back to a previous name, destroy a previous file. The other situation where this could become important is if you load a file you've already been working on and you want to make some changes to it and you don't want to overwrite your previous version so in this particular case let's say I want to make changes to this test one file so first I'm going to do is save file save as I'm going to say test one call it version A and save that before I make the edits that way when I get carried away drawing lines and things and pretty soon you forget what you're doing and you click save and boom you just overwrote the old test one file but by naming it before I made the edits there's no way I can overwrite the previous file because it's already named test one revision A so that's the two considerations about 
saving files. Next we're going to talk about loading files. Let's say I come up here and I want a file, a recent, open recent files. I've had all these open files open recently. Let's load this tabloid template. So I just click to load it like anything else. And it, what it is, it's a paper outline for an 11 by 17 inch piece of paper. It's for a house plan drawing. If I use my window zoom tool, I can go up here and select my window zoom tool and I can come down here and zoom in on this particular area. And notice there are words down here. And that's the drawing scale, it tells the drawing scale, and as we scroll across, all this information is contained down here, but you can't see it because it's severely reduced. Why is it reduced so much? Well, it's reduced so that all entities of the drawing can fit on the drawing area. QCAD does that automatic when you first load a file. It sets the scale or whatever it takes to maximize the view of all the entities in the, in the particular file. Let's load a different file. Let's load up... Um, say test 1A. Notice now the scale is one inch as each dot. Each dot is one inch spacing. Each vertical and horizontal grid line is 10 inches represented. If I go back and load the other file again and I get my mouse to work. The tabloid, notice the scale is three foot between the dots. 36 inches between the dots. 12 feet between the grid lines. So the program automatically scales to show all the entities of your drawing when you first load any new drawing. I shouldn't say new drawing. When you first load a drawing you have previously saved. If you select new drawing, then it's obviously going to start with a blank screen. We've already shown you how we can view the command line. We can view the property editor, tab it on top so we can see it, tab the command line on top so we can see it. We've been through us before. There's one other very important toolbar that we need to talk about, and that's the pen toolbar. So if you come up here and select view, select toolbars, and the pen, by clicking on that, it left clicked it. Notice if I view it again, view toolbars, the pen now has a check mark. So the system now honors the pen toolbar, and it's right here, it stuck it up here. Due to my small screen, you can't see all of it. So I'll pull it over so you can see it. So it talks about the drawing pen. We can select the color. The color can be your choice. And cover, you can select a pen color for a layer, too, if you have multiple layers. You can also select the pen thickness. And you can select the pen type, whether it's continuous, dots, dashes, all those combinations. So this is a pretty important tool. You may want to preset it and then not use it that much. So if that's the case, bring it up here. Preset your pen tool to what you think you would use mostly in this particular drafting situation. Then you always just go up here and unview it again. Notice it's not one of the items over here. It's not one of the pen tools that show up over here. So we'll go up here, view, toolbars, turn off the pen tool. So it's not in our way. Next we have the viewing toolbar. That consists of these items, the drafting mode, what kind of display you get, uh, the line types, your grid, whether it's exposed or not. Notice right now it's turned off, now it's turned on. The dots appear, now the dots are gone. So you control the grid viewing. You control zooming pluses, zooms in, zoom out, zoom auto. I'll come back to that in a second. Zoom previous, zoom window, pan and zoom. So the zoom auto, what that does, that, that zooms the page so that all the entities can fit on the drawing area, just like it did when you first loaded a new file. So the loading of a new file does a zoom auto for you automatically. But you can also do it anytime you want to. So that covers the uh, viewing toolbar. Right above it, we have the help menu. Up here, a help drop-down menu. And we have a reference menu you can load up. And like most manuals, it's got all the topics here. You got indexes. You can bookmark things of interest to you. And that's what you do if you need help. We touched on this topic briefly a little bit earlier. Where we were talking about how the, the grid dots change when you loaded different files. Well, that's because the grid, when you zoom your pages in and out, let's zoom in a little bit. Notice how the grid dots get further apart. 
And eventually they'll have to change the scale, otherwise they're too far apart and they serve no use of no no purpose. See so now the grid dots are point one inches apart. So the grid automatically adjusts to whatever zoom level you're looking at the drawing with. The drawing itself never changes. You just change the magnification that you're viewing the drawing with. As I mentioned earlier, down here at the bottom of the page we have we have absolute Cartesian coordinate information, absolute polar coordinate information. Underneath that, well, we don't have anything right now. Right, let me draw a line. So let me draw a line. Let me get snapped to the grid dots. There's a line. Now you notice now down here at the bottom we have absolute. My mouse won't go down that low. Well, right here we have the absolute Cartesian relative Cartesian coordinates. Over here we have the relative polar coordinates. Above them we have the absolute polar coordinate, absolute Cartesian coordinates. Over here we have our mouse status. It tells us what to do next. If I'm up here trying to draw a line, notice it says click for the next point on the left side or click on the right side when you finish. So if I get my mouse to another snap point, left click, it continues the line. If I'm finished, I right click and the line's finished. Now it's saying I can start the first point of a new line. So I can start the first new line here. It says do the next point. It says do the next point. So I can put the end of that line there. It says next point. Then right click when you're finished because it says when you're done, right click. So I right click and I'm finished. Now so I do the first point of the next line. So it's a little status thing. It pretty much tells you what to do with your mouse. And it'll be very useful as, this, as we go through all these training lessons. So that concludes the QCAD window, the basic items that comprise the window. And once you know QCAD, you will know how to use all these various aspects of the QCAD window.